Hello, and welcome to yet another exciting, nail-biting Gamers Inquirer review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It was released on the 28th of October with mostly average reviews, which would have been great if the original Modern Warfare 2 of 2009 isn't widely hailed as the best Call of Duty game of all time. This is made even more concerning by the fact that Modern Warfare 2019, the prequel to Modern Warfare 2, is also critically acclaimed. That's like being Coke Zero when your big brother is the 1886 Coca-Cola. You know, the one that was made with actual The game has an open critic score of 77%, a game rant score of 2.5 out of 5, and an IGN score of 6 out of 10. Ouch. Now that's gotta hurt. Are these scores justified? I mean, after all, these are the same guys that gave Black Adam a 5 out of 10, but gave the twerking She-Hulk an 8 out of 10. Someone there must definitely be drinking some of that 1886 Coke I've been talking about. Find out in this speed reloading, missile firing, teabagging review of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Alright, up first is the story and narrative. Why? We all keep secrets, Captain. What the hell was I informed? Modern Warfare 2 picks up a few years later after the events of the first game. Captain Price and other members of the Task Force 141 team up with Kate Laswell of the CIA, Alejandro Vargas of the Mexican Special Forces, Nikolai, and a host of others to track down Major Hassan Zayani and recover stolen ballistic missiles before they are used for a terror attack on the United States. There's also a bit of a storyline on General Shepard's betrayal and an obligatory post credit scene which seems to get the ball rolling for Modern Warfare 3. Modern Warfare 2's storyline is a standard military action-adventure tale we've come to expect from the Call of Duty franchise. There are really no heart-wrenching reveals or M. Night Shyamalan twists to speak of. Despite having a new character and voice actor, General Shepard is still the same snake in the grass we expected him to be. What's more, even the controversial mission from the 2009 game No Russian has been removed, though it was alluded to in the post credit scenes. But all that is perfectly fine since Infinity Ward had made it abundantly clear that just like the first game, Modern Warfare 2 is a realistic military shooter based on ground characters and inspired by real-world events. Though some may feel the storyline was a step back from its predecessor, which explored themes of revenge and the brutal impact of war, ultimately, I feel the storyline succeeds in creating an exciting backdrop for explosive action-packed gameplay, which is really the main reason anyone plays a Call of Duty game in the first place. Am I right? Alright, let's talk gameplay. Modern Warfare 2 also features the standard run-and-gun gameplay with the helping of stealth sequences, which we've come to expect from the franchise. Just like in the first game, there are some innovative additions in certain levels of the game. An example of this would be the crafting mechanics introduced in certain missions, something previously unheard of in the Call of Duty franchise. I also love that each mission feels fresh and distinct. All Gillied Up is one of the most iconic missions in the Modern Warfare series, and Modern Warfare 2 remakes it gloriously. Borderline is another level that I really enjoyed. It has you skulking through the border between Mexico and the USA in the dead of the night while de-escalating volatile confrontations with gun-toting civilians in a manner similar to the fan favorite, Clean House, mission from the previous game. Violence and Timing is also a great mission that I would have confidently recommended to anyone, if not for how frustrating it was to limber up to the front of the convoy while being shot at by every Al-Qaeda terrorist and their grandmother. Number 3. Combat and Stealth Following the line towed by the first game, Modern Warfare 2 has more realistic and somewhat tamed combat sequences. Gone are the days of senselessly mowing down waves of faceless Arabs and Russians in a copy and paste campaign full of bombastic action and over-the-top Michael Bay-inspired set pieces. In its place is a more believable yet 
refined combat. That's not to say there are certain levels where the game cheekily turns a blind eye to the laws of physics, like the aforementioned convoy mission where, for a short while, you shoot while hanging upside down from a damaged helicopter. Now that's something you don't see every day. Not sure at what point in that mission that Gaz is substituted for John Wick, but I'm, I'm definitely not complaining. Modern Warfare 2 also has some pretty satisfying stealth missions too. All gillied up, as I mentioned earlier, is a personal favorite of mine. The satisfaction of landing a headshot on a target that's 100 meters away while hunkering down in tall grass is a feeling no weekend airsoft game can replace. That said, some stealth levels could have been executed better, in my humble opinion. Alone was a mission with lots of great possibilities trapped in Los Alamos, Mexico, while being hunted down by Shadow Company had mouth-watering prospects and featured some innovative game designs. It would have been a perfect mission if only Soap didn't have to move so painfully slow. I mean, seriously, I've seen GTA loading screens that move faster than that guy. All right, next up is graphics and sound design. As with other Call of Duty games, the graphics in Modern Warfare 2 is gorgeous. I mean, just look at it. The dry scorching landscapes of Mexico and radiate vistas of Amsterdam each location was designed to perfection. The character designs also got a noticeable boost. Captain Price looked just as incredible as he did in the prequel. His iconic mutton chops have become so recognizable that they can only be rivaled by Super Mario's mustache. The music and sound design in the game is also one of the best I've heard so far. The explosive rattling sounds of Modern Warfare 2's extensive assortment of firearms were simply breathtaking. From the deafening bangs of frag grenades to the subtle clanging noise of empty shell casings as they touch the ground, every sound I heard during my 8 hour playthrough had a way of immersing me deeper and deeper into the game and I loved it. Alright lastly, replayability. I massively enjoyed my playthrough of Modern Warfare 2's campaign. Infinity Ward had delivered another realistic military first person shooter, ripe with high octane, edge of your seat combat and spellbinding graphics. Therefore, I would say the game's campaign has a high level of replayability, especially on a higher difficulty. I'll definitely be revisiting the game on Veteran as soon as I'm done giving its multiplayer a go. Despite a linear storyline, a handful of inevitable bugs, and some annoying mission designs, Modern Warfare 2 is a solid entry into the Modern Warfare subgenre. The pacing of the game was great, like and combat was so immersive that at times I felt like a full-fledged member of Task Force 141. I left my roughly eight hours playthrough with a satisfactory feeling of shell shock and an unquenchable desire to dive right back into the action. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and give this game four stars. It's a great game for Call of Duty veterans and noobs alike. Do you agree or disagree with my review? Let me know what you think in the comments. We make awesome content like this every week, so like and subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell to get regular updates on new videos. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Who is he? Makarov.